Flexing being on time for once? Shut up, bitch. <laughs> anyway, hey, listen, 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 listen. I'll ask you this. Since a lot of you started working from home during COVID, have you ever been on time since you worked from home? Motherfucker, I work from home and I'm my own boss. You know what I mean? Let's I have absolutely go. zero reason to ever be live in a, in a punctual capacity. So, you know, fucking chill. Respect it. Respect it. Best streamers that has done what? Abraham XQC. I clock in the work at Seven eight, of brain 9 a.m. and wake up at 10 a.m. Shut up. I don't have 30K micromanagers. True. Anyway, folks, I'm in a great mood. Um, I did another COVID test uh, today, earlier this morning when I first woke up. Not when I first woke up, but like I was taking care One of business, you know, doing big business deals. I was doing big business deals again, you know, as always. But in the process, I took a COVID test and I'm negative again, dude. Listen, all I'm going to say is I beat the case. You know who's not beating the case, though? Okay, you know who's doing the race? Amber fucking heard on the defamation trial. There's nothing else going on in my life. I had Peruvian food for the first time yesterday. We're diving straight and the fuck into address? this defamation suit. Shit's Yucca getting Valley, spicy. California. Getting and spicier than the Peruvian I food I had last night. Let's fucking go. I'm blasting off immediately, and what we're getting the I fuck do. into uh, it. She also celebrated her birthday recently. She's won. Okay. And what is your profession? I am an actor, uh, mostly. Cap. Okay. Now, why are you here? I am here because my ex-husband is suing me uh, for an op-ed I wrote. And how do you feel? He's about like, I'm, I'm, I'm under attack for sharing new ideas. That's what she's saying. I, um, I st struggle to have the words. I struggle to find the words to describe how uh, painful this is. Some baby is one year old and only wants chicken tendies. Uh, this and is horrible word was for okay. me to it's sit here Pogo. for weeks and um, relive everything. Um, here, people months. Let's go that hassle. I knew, um, some well, some not. My ex-husband, with whom I shared a life. Um, we will also cover. Speak um, about our lives in the way that they retail. have. Get on my level, chat. Um, this has been one of the, this is the most painful and difficult thing I've ever gone through, for sure. Now, there was a trial in the UK in July of 2020 where Mr. Depp year of had sued the Sun newspaper like and Dan Wooten. Do you recall that? Yes. Uh, and At least she's not a good actress, so you're not, you can't say like, oh, act better. If she was a better actress, well, I, was, uh, I think this court case could be decided differently. I was um, Being a, great a witness. Like, you, you, you know, thank, I suppose the primary witness. Thank your fucking stars that she's not a good actress. You know what I mean? Relationship, uh, Could you imagine? I, I mean, then again, Johnny. neither is Johnny Depp, so. And what if any... I guess that's the closest we're going to get to fucking the real truth, example, considering neither of these are great actors. Compound. Johnny Depp's a better actor than she is, obviously, example, but like, come on. Uh, uh, overruled. I had to write, um, I think I gave seven witness statements um, under oath. Y'all are just straight simping, dude. I you don't even give a fuck about the stand, truth. You're just simping for Johnny Depp. Oh, my four God. Days, oh, my God. Um, under mostly cross-examination. Motherfuckers be like, Johnny Depp's a great and actor. And then point, and, and I'll be like, name five of their singles. And you'll be like, uh, Jack Sparrow, Jack Sparrow, Jack Sparrow, Jack Sparrow. Okay, Thank dude. You. I'm going to take you Amateur back, and if you can just tell the jury a little bit about No, you just like Jack Sparrow, which, which is cool. fine. I do, too. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I come from Austin, Texas, a small town outside of Austin that you probably have. No one has. Um, it's called Maynard, and uh, I was raised by my mother and my father, it was and my I grew up with a little sister, was although I have a big sister as well. And your little sister's name is? Uh, her name is Whit. Whit Hurd. And how, how much of an age difference is there between Ooh, the two of you? Wit? Whitney and I are about one year. I think we're 16 months apart. So 
right next to each other. Oh, Whitney. And I was about to say, like. What did your father like, do for a living? Uh, my father um, broke horses and did construction. Had um, he painted houses, um, and uh, hunted and fished. But that was for fun. And what did your mom do? She worked. Objection! Like relevant. Objection! Relevant. Um, let me just, since you talked about the breaking horses, can you just tell the jury what your role is in assisting your dad on that, and what objection hearsay breaking horses? Dude, Objection I know, meeting. I know law terms, dude. Can you just tell me about? I need a fucking go live post, boys. Do we have a meme or what? Um, Do we have a meme on, for it? Basically, uh, I I would help him. I was more of a a crash test dummy. You know, when you train a horse, you it, it's a wild animal. It doesn't necessarily like to be hassle um, ridden, and. Uh, there are people out there. Um, you got a podcast named after Johnny Depp called Classic. Show like some respect. You those. think Fear and Malding is named after the movie Fear and Malding and not the book? Oh my Girl God. And Fear and Loathing. And uh, homie just said, ho homie just literally just said, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas is, is, is just a movie. Well, with I mean, I, I'm a I'm a big anti-reading advocate, as you all know. Okay, the, the famously, I attack the, the, the concept of reading. I think it's bourgeois decadence, and you shouldn't do it. But goddamn, dude, that's not show fear, be tough and calm. Pushed it. Tell the jury a little bit about your educational background during those growing up years and your work experience. Uh, I, I worked uh, any job that I could. Why did her dad break horses really instead of feast them? That's a terminology to for taming. Get and, out of Texas and, and do something with my life and see things and do things. Um, so I was in school and really pushed myself <laughs> to. There's no way that was serious. I, I just always pushed myself to um, be able to accelerate the process. I wanted to, you know, get out of school as fast as I could, and I wanted to do. I wanted to. Marxism is mostly just reading. Yeah, it sucks. So what that's why I'm a capitalist. Things, so where did you go to school when you were uh, younger? I was a scholarship kid at a Catholic school um, growing up. Uh, several different Catholic schools, but they were always in the other, you know, on the other side of town, in the wealthier part of town, and um, I grew up quite um, working class and. Uh, and, and thankfully with, um, you know, as long as I maintained an A average, I, uh, I, I enjoyed the benefit of a scholarship and I did that until I realized Here that it I is, by the way, GED blasting off. SAPs Let the people know, early. dude. Let I the people fucking know, dude. <laughs> effectively left school, uh, uh, 16 years old, I believe. I'm not and seeing enough movement. for work during those younger years? I took any job that I could. I worked at my father's construction company, sometimes, um, you know, just administrative stuff. I mean, it was a small company. Um, it's a lady objecting, I so a lady will do cross after. What? I, yeah, I uh, worked at a, like a modeling agency. No, this that is, she's, also, she's, you know, speaking um, her truth. Offered photography classes, makeup classes, hair with her hair team, and makeup classes for people that were pursuing a career in entertainment. And I uh, started for everybody asking, what does this have to do uh, with everything else? Well, obviously, for, they are personally right. establishing uh, background and, and personally a, establishing you know, headshots, what is going on in her life. You, basically, you fucking, uh, you know, to, to yourself, create a narrative you know, that she's like a good person, yada, yada, yada. That's it. So that her her testimony will be and, uh, more charitable. Work did you do when you were still young? Her testimony later down the line will come across as more powerful and more impactful. And they're humanizing her. It's normal. I liked it so much. I think it's it, understandable. That's of course they're going to do that. It meant I wasn't at home, and that was important to me. Is just to not spend time at home. It is a battle uh, of optics. Yes, I, um, I really, I really loved meeting people. So I worked at the soup kitchen every morning before school um, during the school year. Uh, for about four years, there were I didn't go on weekends, um, but on weekends I would do um, various things. Worked at children's, um, like 
at children's uh, museums typically because they would work with younger volunteers. Um, and mostly soup kitchens and things involving children. I worked at the, um, with deaf kids for a while, and uh, yeah, I, I love it. And when you worked with deaf kids, what, if anything, did you do to learn to be able to work with them? Objection leading and 404. Boom! Fucking right. got him! Overruled. Fucking didn't uh, get him! Well, I, I taught myself how to sign basic sign language and fucking did not get him I, um, <laughs> I pursued it I audited a get uh, fucked a translate um, a course at the community college which I ended up going to um, to get out of high school early manipulating um, jury on, standard law practice in USA classes, where you must have legal perks to buy with money yes wanted to kick the you know random 12 year old out of their class I suppose so I remarkably was able to audit uh, um, I think the majority of two semesters and that's also helped help me learn. A 404 objection so is relevant. Law tip. Thank you for Los the law Angeles. tip. I love law tips. I use, I met, I did it. I did it. I was at the Chappelle Texas, show. If you need any uh, insights, <laughs> I, I have friends that were there too. And the actor in the movie that I was playing opposite had an agent visiting him from LA. And I met her on set and she said that, she had heard about me from another bit part I did. You know, I was taking jobs in Austin for really anything, to be an extra, to apply my, I did makeup once. I, um, you know, nothing, no job was too small or, you know, for me. So I, I put myself out there and she had heard about me and she said, my hairline is not second cousins with Johnny Depp's in this town And I'd love to meet you in LA if you're ever out in LA and I was like, um, oh, when can I come? Uh, and she made an appointment with me for the following week and I used all but $180 or something um, to get out there and that's, I landed, I didn't know anyone, uh, I was 17. Um, and I've effectively ever been there ever since, I suppose. So when you arrived in Hollywood, please tell the jury what you did to get moving there, get going. I uh, went to Law every tip, audition. for my evidence final right now. 404 is relevance about prior meeting, acts, crimes, and other acts that would speak to a person's character. That I could. I, I, I can't I tell if you guys are fucking with me or not. I, didn't have a okay. car. I don't and trust you. If, you're, if you're in law school um, or if so you I are a lawyer, around LA. you start speaking about law, I intrinsically, uh, or I instinctively do not trust you, okay? Lawyers are debate perverts. Why are you going to a whole ass school to be a debate pervert? Okay, you're going to yo, debate yo, pervert school. Sometimes a day and would change clothes if I needed to in the back of, you know, the bus I was taking. And you're and doing another activity that I don't trust, which is reading. I, I, I don't like either and, of those. I don't like reading uh, I and I don't like debate pervertry. Thing, and then I got a bit part on another thing. And then Perverted behavior. my roles kind of became hassle, more hassle, important hassle, or hassle. bigger. Minus and, 2K viewers of the um, lawyer take? Yeah, everyone's leaving. Two th you think 2,000 lawyers then, will know, watch me? What do you mean? All the lawyers would be watching XQC, I think, in bigger instead. movies or doing, you know, larger roles in movies that no one would see. And I guess, you know, it still is kind of like that. August nine months. Has I have written law articles on you. Oh, God. Oh, no. 2009. If you could just describe for the jury a little bit what types of parts you had. It's terrifying. Um, I think they've indicated they didn't. You, you have not been well known here uh, in this courtroom compared to Mr. Depp. So perhaps just take. Is it PhDs and lawyers yeah. not yeah. welcome here? I'm um, fucking eliminating. I did like 30 small percent of my audience. It's all fucking. Like, Broke ass yeah, grad Zombieland students in and, here. Um, Pineapple Express and uh, movies that were well known. Um, my first one was Friday Night Lights. Uh, but again, I had small roles in those bigger films. And then I would do larger roles in. The reason why she's getting um, roasted as a nobody is because films, they can establish like a power I dynamic I that way. That's brought, the reason. Um, I did Chad. a project where Understand I was the lead in a John Carpenter that the real film reason why she's to do like, that. oh yeah. I'm just and a that's tiny, kind of small bean. How it it's was because, in terms of my career. It's because in the end, that's going to work initial, in her favor. That, that fucking, first initial you know. 10 years or so, it was just going from slightly bigger role to I'm slightly I'm just a small bean nobody. Like, I'm getting groomed as a 27-year-old by like, so I'm gonna an old-ass man. I'm going to take you up to 2008. Man. Did there come a time that you auditioned for The Rum Diary? 
Yes, I, um, I auditioned for that in about 2008, I believe. Please describe for the jury your experience in auditioning for The Room Diary. Well, I auditioned a few times, which is common in my work. She's the co-lead you know, in Aquaman um, now, but she was tiny back, back then is the and point. And I think I had um, at least one, maybe two callbacks with the director. And then I got a call saying that Johnny, who at the time was, I think I knew that he was producing it as well, um, was doing a project that was something very personal to him. He was reprising his role as his late friend, Hunter S. Thompson, and it was a very yes, important Johnny project watching to him me on and that phone, he wanted to meet up. in person. No cap. Um, I thought I would be going for maybe an audition, um, but it was just a meeting. I went to his office um, and, and met with him for a few hours. And what did you talk about during that, those few hours? We talked about books and music poetry um we like a lot of the same we liked a lot of the same stuff you know obscure writers and you know interesting books and pieces of poetry that i haven't heard anybody else reference or know or like and what he, the fuck? Um, if god didn't want fetuses to be aborted why did he invent well poverty like just fix poverty until then these wombs you know, getting dicey like a dusty rug a books that he gave me and we spent the whole time just this man writes about for the Daily Show, things dude. that we care about. And I love Jabuki, fucking hilarious. I was so surprised that somebody, you know, I knew who he was. I wasn't familiar, you know, I wasn't a fan of his work. I wasn't familiar with him, but I knew who he was. You know, he's mo one of the most famous people in the world. Objection. So it was al already a weird thing to go and get called into his office. Lies. And, you know, I'm a no name See, actor. Do you understand? Do you understand? I'm a no name and, actor. I'm a no-name actor. Unusual. I'm a small I, bean. It was weird because he's he was twice my age, and he's this world-famous actor, and here we are getting along about obscure books. Oh, dude, come weird, on. You know, old blues, and we just, it, it was, I thought it was remarkable. You know, I just hadn't really, I thought it was unusual. And Bro, fucking Radlibs will there. suck this on, uh, suck up this uh, argument, too. They'll be like, yeah, that's true. Yeah, he's fucking got groomed, dude. Be cast for the role in the Rum Diary. Yes, a few days later, my agent um, said that Johnny's gonna call you. We gave him your phone number. I was like, oh, okay. And shortly after, I my phone rings. I pick it up, and I hear, you know, this like deep voice on the other line. And he said, "You got the, you know, you're it, kid. You're the." You're the dream. Hunter wrote yeah. this part. And it's, I'm telling you, dude. Right. It's, uh, it's, like, and my, it's, it's, wait, what is this? There's a micro influencer leftist that lawyer means. TikToker what, what that watches you and he's pretty based. And this Hunter Thompson. What, what was the concept? Oh, yeah. I've, this guy playing? thirst traps and shit, um, right? Well, it was my understanding that he was bringing to life a, his late friend. And what he told me was that this character is supposed to be the dream woman like the dream american dream and um so i knew what he meant he indicated to me when he told me i got the role that i was i was that you know that he i was the dream kid that's what he said so did there come a time that you started filming the rum diary yes i'm not quite sure how much I think we started filming in maybe March of 2009. And where did you film The Rum Diary? We shot it in Puerto Rico. Okay. Um, and describe, if you can, the events of the filming and your interactions with Mr. Depp during that time. It was a bit surreal, you know, uh, filming in a place like Puerto Rico. No spoilers? It, um, it takes place in the 50s, so everything really looked beautiful and you know cars and clothing the music it was just it was a very colorful um shoot in general i i i couldn't Damn. have asked for I can't know, believe a, a, a the rum diaries scenario. dude i was totally going to watch that my now. Film. i mean i was on set um reading 
my books and every, occasionally Johnny would talk to me and then he started to be really kind to me, um, like more open with me uh, when we'd have hot days Asshole. filming. 6.1 you know, on IMDb? Okay, I was kidding. I'm obviously not. A I'm making a joke about, kind of let's be real, that movie's car, probably trash. have the AC blasting and I'd be <laughs> sitting in the back of the SUV just thinking what a strange experience the whole thing was. And, Eight months you know, and I can't wait we didn't for my really have a whole lot of away. interaction on set until um, until we did a scene that involved um, kissing. We had a kissing scene and it didn't feel like a normal, it didn't feel like a normal scene anymore. It felt, a, it felt more real. There are certain things that you do in the job to Yeah, she's um, saying be that like like when you have to do she's that. She's saying sort of again, she's a young scene. small bean, okay? And little you, uh, you know, little city girl you, with big dreams you meets tongue, big Johnny you Depp you, you twice her age, ew, yuck, uh grooming. Uh and, and then and that kissy poo like sparks a, a real love hand, affair hand, that turns into a nightmare. That's the entire story. From her perspective. But we were filming a scene. Did he use his tongue? Yes. Okay. What the fuck? Did your birthday, did you celebrate your birthday while you were in Puerto Rico? I did. I celebrated, I think, maybe my 23rd birthday there. And what, if anything, did Mr. Depp do for your birthday? Well, we were already kind of talking about books and poetry and things like that. He gave me a few really beautiful poetry books. And uh, he gave me a bicycle, uh, like a vintage bicycle, because at the time I was riding around in, on a bike, and I had a lot of time off since I was a smaller role in the movie. And um, yeah, bro, this is a trial about elder abuse. It. You're right, Doctor Paxmore. Now, did there come a it's time? It's straight elder that, abuse, homie. Um, you Johnny Depp was like 50, uh, dog. Visiting him in his he trailer. Old. Yes, um, I think there was a we would hang out if you know after or in between scenes or in between setups, we often were, you know, talking about things and would continue the conversation into the trailer, um, often with the director, Bruce Robinson was his name. Um, and then at one point we, we talk about wine. It's another thing that Johnny and I shared in common, a love for uh, wine, red wine. Uh, and we were talking about um, a kind of wine that I enjoyed and I was, you know, going on about how great this, bargain wine was and I didn't understand you know how much more sophisticated Johnny's taste in wine was um, so I was going on about the virtues of Malbec or something and I brought him a bottle of this wine and yeah, Hollywood I people are so cringe set it down and at some point poetry I'm, and I'm, fucking I'm wine dude Jesus back Christ to set, and he kind of kicked his like you know Foot up in the also, air. you can't simultaneously be like, I was a small bean at the age of 22, okay? And, and then be like, I love wine and poetry that this fucking old ass man was showing me. Like, um, it was a period film, so it's. Uh, I'm sorry, it's but like, what? And so I had all of this. Um, no, you were like, oh shit, it's Johnny Depp. Like, that's hot. I think that that's super cool. Era, um, on. And the scene involved me changing so much so um, that i'm gonna fake it it's so like I when women laugh at my jokes on. am i funny fuck no and why are they I laughing because they think it's the cool they, they think i'm hot okay and, and i kind of turned around and like or chatter like giggled you know um it i wasn't i didn't feel i just didn't I, like i didn't know what to make of it at the time i'm joking just kind of, chat just kind i'm of joking giggled and batted it away playfully and uh he he, kind of playfully. As a 27 kind of year old woman, I'm not about to get groomed by a man fun. old enough to be my father, Johnny Depp uh, or not. Yeah, that that's what I'm saying. Trailer, like what? Playful. You're like a whole um, ass woman, dude. What the fuck? And he said, uh, "Yum," and he kind of like lifted up his eyebrows like that. And I just giggled, l l laughed it off, kind of batted him away, and you know, moved on, went back to set. And were you in a relationship at that time? I was. Okay. And was Mr. Depp in a relationship at that time? That was my understanding, yeah. Okay. Uh, and did anything else of significant happen during that that time period while you were filming with Mr. Depp, Johnny. other than what you've told us? We just had this 
you know, it, it was a friendship, a flirtatious thing. We, I felt chemistry. I felt this. If Johnny the Depp had actually read the Quran, that was, that okay, the and didn't job, fucking cheat on his sure. uh, a partner at the time, none of this would have happened. Need, I'm sorry, you know. Shouts out to Johnny Depp. Sure, he's a victim, but you know, Allah could have saved him from making this mistake. Ways, and, but at the same time, that is what you need to remember in this story. I know okay. Both in relationships, and it is a job, and you know, I, it was intimidating. It's look, I, I remember he's out here fucking kind of talking about wine instead about of you know reading his fucking favorite surah. He's he's he's, he's talking about fucking poetry books and shit. For a long time. Hold on. Hold on. Don't so do that. Approximately how long were you filming in Puerto Rico for the Rum Diary? A few months is my best. All guess. right. And when you left Puerto Rico in the filming, when is the next time that you had any contact from Mr. Depp? And contact could include a anything, uh, uh, communications, written communications, uh, as well as. Man, you are just uh, funny, and I do not find you hot at all. Your jokes and jokes in uh, general are funny for no you, even after explaining. Until, Thanks. Uh, Johnny called me on the Thanks, phone. Thanks, chatter. One day, and I was driving, okay. and he invited me over to his home. But in, dude, no, you're just California. funny. I fucking I don't find you attractive. Hills. Shut the fuck up. And you're just I, funny. Um, okay, you're not hot. You're funny. Shut up. I mean, it was out of the blue. I didn't even have his phone number. What's up, dude? You want to go on a date so now? Like, was, what's going on? Are you unexpected. nagging me? Like, uh, he called me a second time, but I, I don't think we actually connected, or we didn't stay on the phone um, <laughs> because we didn't. Well, yeah, we didn't really speak. But the first time was the only time I actually spoke to him, and he invited me over to his house uh, under kind of the. He said that, you know, we could get Bruce, who was the director, uh, to come over, something about the movie. Oh, no. But it was clearly not about the movie, if you know what I mean. It was, so I said, um, I, I said, my friends are in town, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm busy with that, and kind of hung up, feeling really startled, you know, that didn't know what else to do. What, what gifts did Mr. Depp send you during that time oh, period God. after you filmed The Rum Diary? Uh, he sent me several gifts. He sent me a beautiful dress, uh, one that I wore in the movie, uh, with a beautiful handwritten note said "Happy Wrapping," and um, made a reference to the dress being wrapping paper. Uh, he sent me a few gorgeous, expensive, what I can only assume are expensive, um, collectible books uh, items. Uh, and then when I was away filming on a different, you know, a different job, he uh, attempted or he did send me um, some guitars. Uh, I know one delivery. I was informed about one delivery um, and I, my partner at the time uh, intercepted the, the, the attempt to, to deliver and called me immediately and said, what should I do? And I said, well, send, I said, send it back. And she did, and sh so, she indicated. Uh, so that what's up? Like he was making numerous attempts at you, and you just were grossed out. You were like, "Oh, gross! No, I d I really don't want we that." Sent, I sent it back. You know, I wasn't there, and I wouldn't have accepted it anyway. Okay. Oh man, I just did ooh ew, gross! I I, I hate this, and also simultaneously, like you know, diary. you have a fucking. We, relationship that bared out for uh, in the most in traumatic and horrible and toxic ways for the next so like fucking ten years. Two two and a half years after you filmed. Oh, you're so gross! I want to marry um, you. <laughs> Ew. I'm an actress, not a mathematician, for a reason. <laughs> Roughly, yes. Okay. And um, I mean, the worst part about this, in my opinion, the, the worst tour. part about this, in my opinion, is that like this is very real. There are a lot of instances where women are unfairly and unjustly fucking. Uh, 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 I guess followed and and um, oh my god what's the term I'm looking for the, women are women do get harassed like this okay they absolutely do get harassed like this don't say love bombed pursued is the word I was thinking of but I was like thinking persecution for some reason okay pursued 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 like courted pursued the difference between like someone being courted and someone being pursued however can be the, the unfuckability of the other partner and how gross they are, how weird they are. And then they, you know, ramp up the fucking stakes. So the issue in this situation, don't say love bombed, okay? You fucking Zoomers. Oh my God. Like, 
interpersonal relationships are a gray area. So obviously there's like more to it. Obviously there's more to it than like the difference between someone being like a, a, uh, someone, the difference between someone pursuing you in an aggressive and like gross manner and, uh, and, and someone actually being super romantic to you is just consent. Right. And the reality in the situation is that like, we know that like the consent was there in that situation. So for her to like, uh, indicate that there wasn't, is kind of weird because we know what happened afterwards. You know what I mean? Like we already know what happened afterwards. You guys got like in a fucking relationship. So why are you making it seem like it's like, Oh, I just didn't want it. He was like, ew, so yucky and gross. And using his like power over me to groom me, a small bean at the age of fucking 27 years old. As soon as I got there, Johnny said, yeah, Bruce yeah, wasn't she gonna do going to make it. Huh? So I stayed. Johnny and I started talking. Uh, I told, he asked me about my relationship. I said, well, you know, I'm going, I'm going through it. Um, I'm going through the separation right now. And it's been, you know, rough couple of months, but that's normal. Asshole. And he said, well, that same with, same with me, you know, it's been, I, I can't remember exactly how long he said it had been, but that he had split from the mother of his kids and uh, said that he understood. All right. And then what happened next? Power dynamics uh, can influence the relationship at any age, though, dude. And continued to talk. And dude, when you're a fucking actress, like you're being us. crazy. It's not like he's literally you know, like the person giving her the job. Like, okay. They're, they're um, actors. I mean, she's a smaller actor. He's a larger actor, uh, but you're fucking wild. If you're like, oh, well then yeah, no, no two actors can ever fuck one another unless they're literally directly you know, fucking it, it influential like in the was, same uh, meaningful way. It, you know what I mean? Like there was an electricity to the room.